melee combat without any sort of a knockback effect it just looks lame. There's no feedback at all so that you can get a sense that you're actually hitting the enemy. So in this tutorial, we're going to show a quick and effective way to knock back your enemies. Let's get started. Now this tutorial is going to assume a couple of things. First of all, that your player is already able to swing a sword and detect collisions with an enemy. If you don't have that yet, you can go back and check out my other tutorials on animating melee attack and on dealing damage. Now at the heart of this tutorial, you are going to need a rigid body 2D, both on your player and also on your enemy. This will be set to dynamic, which it is set to by default. All right, let's hop into our scripts. I'm going to be working from two codes here today. My first script is an enemy health script that at the moment just keeps track of how much health the enemy has. And it has a take damage method where the enemy's health is subtracted and he is destroyed if he gets to zero or less. This get information here about how much damage to take comes from my melee attack script. And this one simply um, allows me to slash my sword, detect enemies, and send a message about how much damage to deal. All right, so we're gonna start off in our enemy health script as that's where the magic is really gonna happen. And we're gonna need, first of all, a public reference to our rigid body 2D. I'll call this one enemy RB. I'm gonna re-add the start function at this point because I want us to be able to find the enemy's rigid body through the code without having to do it in Unity. So we're going to say that our enemy rigid body is equal to now we don't need to find the game object itself because this code is already on the game object of the enemy so we can simply just look for the component of the rigid body 2d and it will find it so now our code knows where to find our rigid body now we just need to tell the rigid body what to do so we'll head down into this take damage function and before the enemy actually takes the damage we're going to have the effect happen. That way we won't have a problem where our enemy is destroyed before he bounces back after a sword attack. And all we're going to want to do here is have our enemy RB have a force added to it. Now add force does just what you would think. It adds force. Um, and in the brackets, you're going to need to tell it what direction the force is, how powerful you want the force to be, and what type of force. So first of all, we don't know yet what direction we're facing, so I'm just going to assume at this point the player is on the left of the enemy, so he's facing right. So in that case, we want to go in a vector 2 dot right, and we're going to multiply this by something called knockback force, which we haven't created yet, so Unity's not going to like that. We'll do a comma, and at that point we can say what type of force mode we want. So you can type in force mode 2D, and we're going to do dot impulse. This just adds all of the force all at once. You get a nice juicy push that diminishes over time. Now, as you know, it's not liking this knockback force. We'll fix that in just a second. But we also need to set this up so that it works no matter what side of the enemy we're on. I'm going to make a if statement here. So if facing right, and then we'll hop down here and put that line of code into those brackets. So now if I'm facing right, I'll send the enemy to the right. I'll type else, so this will be if I'm facing left, and we'll just borrow that exact line of code and change the direction to left. Now, we don't know yet whether we're facing right, so we're going to have to add that. And there's one last thing to do here before we find this information for our code. Up here at the top of our function for taking damage, we are currently getting the information of how much damage to deal from our melee attack. Let's also get information about a bool for whether we're facing right, so whether that's true or false, and also a float for how much knockback force to deal. Let's just pop back into our melee attack script now. So when we get into our melee attack script, you'll notice that the take damage call is angry at us. That's just because our enemy health script is expecting us to send over three pieces of information, but currently there's only one, so we need to fix that. So let's begin by going up to the top here and just creating a public float called knockback force. We can set that value in Unity and test it to get it just right, but now at least we have a container to hold the information. Now we can head down here into our take damage call, add a comma, and put knockback force into that bracket. Now we're sending two pieces of information, but our enemy health script still needs to know what direction the force is coming from. So. I'm going to create a new line here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to declare a local variable called facing right. So facing right is going to be equal to 
And what we're gonna do here is in brackets, I'm just gonna put transform dot position dot x. So this will keep track of our players um, X position. Remember this script is on our player. So when we type in transform position, it's looking at his position and specifically his X because we want to know whether um, we want to look horizontally. And then we're going to put a greater than sign. And now we're going to type in enemy, which is a reference to this keyword up here that finds our enemies dot transform dot position dot X. We can close that up. So now if our position on the X is greater than the enemies, facing right will be true. Now, actually, that's not correct, because if our x is greater, that means we're on his right, which means we're actually facing left. <laughs> a little bit confusing, but we got it. So now if our transform position x is less than the enemies, we'll be facing right. And the beautiful thing about a expression like this is that if that is not true, it will automatically make facing right false. So we don't have to do separate lines for if it's true and if it's false. Now we can put that information down here. So we can now send over the facing right information, comma, and now take damages happy with us because all three information are being sent over. Back in Unity, you will need to set your knockback force. I've set mine to a force of 20, but you can tweak it and try that out for yourself. And now when we get in here, we've got a nice little knockback effect. Now, one thing we'll add just as a bonus feature is at the moment, our enemy is only slowing down because of friction, but we can actually get a nice snappy end to our knockback as well if we like. So let's head back into our script. So to get a nice snappy um, bounce back after the knockback effect to our enemy, we're going to head into our enemy health script and we're just going to create a public float called delay time. Um, I'm going to actually set mine right here. I'm going to set this one equal to like 0.15. Don't forget the F to let it know it's a float. Now this delay will come down at the bottom of our take damage and we're actually going to call a coroutines. I'm going to type in start coroutine and I'll call this one delay. And then we just have to create that coroutine. So remember from our earlier um, tutorial that a coroutine uses an I enumerator. We'll call this one delay. And all it does is it's kind of like a method, except that it allows us to build in pauses before executing the next line of code. So in this case, what I just want to do is have our yield return new wait for seconds. And then in that bracket there, we're just going to put our delay time variable. So this code will wait 0.15 seconds before running the next line of code. And what it's going to do there is it's going to just take the enemies, it's going to take the enemy's rigid body and we're going to set its velocity to be equal to vector 2.0. So all that means is that after 0.15 seconds, the enemy will halt completely. So we won't get that slow friction affected slowdown um, before he continues moving, but we'll after 0.15 seconds immediately stop so that he can start moving back toward you again. Now, just to give you an idea of what that looks like when I hit the enemy, you'll notice now that the knockback ends really abruptly and it comes back at me, which creates a little bit more of like a furious sort of an effect. I could also change these values a little. Let's up our knockback effect. To make this more dramatic, I've upped my knockback effect from 20 to 50. And so now you get this really powerful knockback that halts quickly and then the enemy starts coming back at you again. Now you can hone those numbers to get them just the way you want them, but that should be working nicely at this point. All right, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel as it really does help a lot. Until next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Thanks for watching.